All right, let's move on to the huge news out of Arizona. Kirsten Cinema shocked the political world yesterday by announcing she was stepping down. She was retiring. Uh, I think we have some video that we can roll of Kirsten Cinema queued up. She gave a what sounded sort of conspicuously like a no label no labels thing, but she's also said that she is not interested in the no yeah. labels ticket. Just listen to what Kirsten Cinema said in this video. The only political victories that matter these days are symbolic. Attacking your opponents on cable news or social media. Compromise is a dirty word. We've arrived at that crossroad and we chose anger and division. I believe in my approach, but it's not what America wants right now. I love Arizona and I am so proud of what we've delivered. Because I choose civility, understanding, listening, working together to get stuff done, I will leave the Senate at the end of this year. So she didn't want to run against Carrie Lake, Ryan. Yeah, and so polls have her under 10% in the, in the election. Mm -hmm. uh, Ruben Gallego said that he would challenge her if, if she didn't support Biden's kind of domestic policy agenda. She thwarted Biden's domestic policy agenda. So Gallego did jump into the race. Gallego is a couple points behind Lake in polls, I think, in mm -hmm. general. Uh, but with cinema gobbling up single digits, but non-trivial single digits, that was making it a tough race for him. Probably not a ton of Carrie Lake and Kirsten Cinema crossover no, voters. No, no, uh, but a lot of Cinema uh, and Gallego crossover voters. So she was an independent technically, but yeah, right, but ran I, as a Dem last but, time. Right, exactly. But I, th I think that this makes Gallego. You know, if we were doing the uh, the, the, the counterpoints needle and say lean Dem at this point mm -hmm. uh, in the in the Arizona Senate race as as a result of her dropping out of this. You know, the the thing that. Uh, might have been kind of peak Kirsten Cinema came during the $15 minimum wage vote. Uh, and if, if we can play this here, I think what drove people nuts is that she, here she is coming out on the Senate floor in her just Gen X costume uh, <laughs> and, and giving the Shady. thumbs down, like this like kind of enthusiastic thumbs down to a $15 an hour minimum wage. Uh, I asked uh, somebody on Twitter when, when that happened, to come up with a, a nice edit of it with the Four Non Blondes What's Up song. Yes. It's so good. Uh, we're not gonna play it here because we, we don't want uh, this, vi this video to get taken down because they, they wanna hide the truth from you that that was, that was a Four Non Blondes moment mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. It's just so incredible to see, you know, th these, these are the leading lights of, of my generation. It's the like, two sides of the Gen X coin, right? Yeah. Like you either end up being Ryan Grimm or Kirsten Cinema. <laughs> yeah, and so it, it, she started out like me. Basically, yes. like a fringe anti-war protest. Wiccan. Yeah, uh, she was a fil she was working with Code Pink. Uh, she went. She protested the 2004 uh, convention. Uh, either whichever whichever convention was down in in Miami, she was she was out there in the streets, protesting it. Uh, she was elected as a basically a progressive in the in the in the Arizona legislature. And then she was just on grease skids from, from left to right. She was elected to the House, still somewhat normie Dem. Gets, she wins in 2018 in the Senate, fairly standard uh, Democratic line at, at that point, but very quickly um, became kind of the biggest thorn in the left side. She, she, if she wanted, she could have held that seat you know, indefinitely. Or, you know, she was, that, it was hers. Uh, it'll be interesting to see where her, where her corporate payout comes from, I think speeches will be lucrative for her. Mm -hmm. Like she can show up at associations and get 20, 30 grand a pop just to like, maybe even more than that, you know, to speak to like the dental association so that they can yeah. like say like, oh look, we've got Kirsten, Kirsten Cinema here. She could do some consulting, I think on, for some corporations, mm -hmm. um, just so that, like she could be like a rainmaker, somebody who like meets with clients and, and helps bring them on. She's very charming personally. Um, she loves to like, you know, have nice dinners, drink nice wine. She, in, she interned at a private equity owned uh, vineyard winery uh, while she was a senator. Uh, she likes the good life, good for her. Uh, and she, so she can get that financed, I think. And, and rainmaking is almost more important than kind of doing this, the strategy like bringing in those big clients. So she can do that. She's not gonna be able to lobby a lot of Democrats, that's for sure. Nobody, they're not gonna wanna take her calls, but she can call a lot of these Republicans. I think they, they, really, they, they really like her personally. 
Yeah, yeah, and it's not like Republican voters like her personally, but Republican, right. sort of powerful Republicans right. do. She's got she, their cell numbers. She knows what's going on. And I yeah. should say her committee assignments in terms of where that payout might come from, she was on Homeland Security. Uh, she was on Commerce, Science, and Transportation. She was on Appropriations. There's plenty of uh, money to be made for Kirsten Cinema now. I do think that it's interesting. No label said they're going to decide within the week after Super Tuesday. There are tons of leaks coming out of no labels in places like Politico that it's an absolute disaster behind the scenes. Of course. Big donors yeah. feel like they no labels missed their moment, that they should have had someone jump in. They should have uh, begged a Joe Manchin or a Kirsten Cinema to jump into the race or a Larry they did. Hogan. They did. Uh, beg them. But they should have done it successfully um, and gotten them to, to jump into the race. Manchin obviously said he didn't want to be a spoiler, but Kirsten Cinema is an independent. She actually left the Democratic Party. She came out and gave this address about how uh, compromise is a dirty word. That is one of the uh, great misleading lines of no labels uh, that, you know, if we just compromised more, which is a total code for if we just grifted more, if we just got those centrist uh, members from wealthy districts to agree mm -hmm. to spend more money for their friends, then everything would work out. It's like, that is absolutely true. We could pass tons of legislation if we got these populists out of Washington, whether they're on the left or the right. Uh, I remember when we had, not too long ago, Sam Godaldig uh, and his uh, colleague on the show to talk about how actually the wealthiest districts on the House side uh, tend to be the most centrist districts, and the poorest districts tend to be the populist districts. And that's what the no labels conversation is really about. They think, it, of course, it all trickles down and helps the poor when you spend money, at, yeah. which is the, the argument they've been making for Ukraine, uh, that we're just, we're rebuilding America's industrial belt uh, because of this this Ukraine spending, which is also not even true. Yeah, I think Mike, Mike Williams and Sam Goodaldi, when they t came on and talked about that report, if I remember correctly, uh, and you guys watched that, so you might remember, the richest caucus in in the country is the No Labels Caucus, yes. which is the problems No Labels sponsor the Problem Solvers Caucus, and so uh, the this the No Labels theory has been tried. Like Cinema tried it. Like mm -hmm. she she very closely hewed to the demands of the private equity industry and, mm -hmm. and the way that they think the Congress ought to legislate, and she wound up at like eight percent. Yeah, and then th that's actually. Uh, doing better than she ought to have because the private equity world is less than 8%. Yeah. I, just while we're talking about Kirsten Sinema, I need to make an important correction. She was not herself a Wiccan. Um, this is reading from a friend of the show, Philip Wegman, who wrote this article back in October 2018. He, he broke a story, of, and I just got to read the the prose here. Rep. Kirsten Sinema, the Democratic nominee for U.S. Senate, is not a witch, but she has been known to hang out with witches. <laughs> It was during the height of the Iraq War when cinema, then a far it left. The, it was the 90s, man. Every, everybody was wicked. Everyone was dabbling. Yeah. Uh, pro, then a far left protest organizer summoned, super, summoned supernatural help to help stop the Iraq War. Emails obtained from the Washington Examiner show cinema inviting a prominent coven of feminist witches in Arizona called Pagan Cluster to celebrate International Women's Day and protest the war in March of 2003. The arc of Kirsten Cinema is no, true. She basically lived my life in the 90s. I was going to say, yeah. it's a fascinating arc, but I also feel like it's, you, you've go in one of two directions, right? Like you either think that, and that's what drives me crazy about no labels is they spend so much money trying to convince normal Americans that what's super edgy is their idea of like compromise. And it's it's bullshit. It's just a code word for corporatism. Um, there's nothing edgy about it. It's it's not like, they, they, like even the, the category, no labels, even the name, no labels, they're trying to make it sound hip and cool. Uh, even though it's basically like the dad tennis shoes of politics. Sorry, that's my, that was yeah. really, that was my, sexist. My my pet theory on on cinema, and I'd love to maybe we can get her on after she's no longer a senator, and and just put this to her because I'm curious. She, I, I used to talk to her a decent amount when she was in the House of Representatives before mm -hmm. she made her her right wing turn. Uh, and I, my so my pet theory is that the the far left that she was a. It, that she was a significant like daily part of back in the 90s, mm -hmm. 2000s, I can testify, can be a pretty toxic uh, and unpleasant place. And I wonder if she mistook that the to the individual toxicity that you have to put up with in the service of the, 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 the agenda, the mission, the common good, uh, for what the left represents, because she has a visceral kind of personal hatred for the left that really can't as far as I believe, it could be explained any other way. Mm -hmm. like she talks about, 
you know, that, that all we want to do is like, you know, go after, you know, each, each other's opponents. Like, you know, no, nobody goes after anybody harder than cinema goes after the left. Yeah. Um, and, and I, it's got, it's gotta be something there. Maybe she'll tell us. And we'll, well, I'll, I'll put it on my calendar a year from now. We'll have her on. We'll have her on and we'll, we'll just put her on the couch and, you know, figure out like what happened. I think it's deeply What's personal on, to as the, Kirsten. As the four non blondes would ask. Exactly. But I think to Kirsten Cinema and Tulsi Gabbard, there's something, people like that. There's something uh, that is very personal because there's this feeling, and I'm sure actually a lot of our viewers feel it, that the party, the Democratic Party that you were used to supporting, um, it feels like if you look at certain issues, went crazy. And uh, if you don't like the squad and you're still like an anti-corporate, anti-establishment Democrat, you're going to be like, well, what the hell am I going to do? And then Kirsten suddenly gets some money thrown at her. And she's an independent. So again, I think it's both sides of the Gen X coin represented. Yeah, and and uh, for people curious about what I'm talking about, if you've ever done, an, let's say, organizing with the Green Party, mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm <laughs> talking about. If you haven't, then you don't. He almost sold T-shirts at Woodstock '99. Fun That's Ryan right. Grimm fact. I did sell Nader T-shirts at uh, Madison Square Garden when he was running for Hell office. Yeah. Hey, if you liked that video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Breaking Points. If you want to see the rest of CounterPoints, go to BreakingPoints.com to become a premium member and get the full uncut show every morning in your inbox and on Spotify. Help us build independent news and get the full show every morning at BreakingPoints.com.